connect to the statue here. What's the problem? Yeah, the salt is very strong. You can get a pretty good streamer out of that. That's enough on the last bit. No, the most effective car of it. Feels like on a certain uh, like uh, space, the current is stronger than when you go near. Yeah. Yeah. So when you go, yeah, when you start gapping, the spark yeah. gap when it breaches, you know that spherical breach. That's when we get pulse waves. Yeah. That's where the secondary effect happens when it's the spherical uh, or atmosphere is involved in this. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that's what we have to find the rhythm to, you know, and start getting that that combination. Now, when we start doing this, you know, just stay away from the metal, or it'll really, it'll really kick you. Now, one okay. of the things, let's we, imagine. We want, to, look, we want to try the basalt sure. on limestone. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah, we we'll see how this goes. Yeah, all right, so now that's we're putting a, that's lime. A combination. There is a combination of all that the inner part yeah. of it is limestone, and the outside part of it is basalt. So we could possibly get a, an increase or a decrease of energy. We haven't done these two yet. Still strong. Right. Looks stronger. Yeah, it's stronger, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Probably still stronger in your touch. Yeah. I said but how much of a You can hear it you can hear it lower in its resonance when you connect with it. Yeah. Good. So of course we're using small amount Ooh. <laughs> Oh now you did it. Buy so now you can see uh, when we. Uh, it's closer to the lime so as much as Oh, yeah, lime, yeah. yeah. Well, the larger the piece of lime, yeah. the stronger the energy is. We put that mm. cobra on there, that two foot tall cobra. Yeah. It would be a very interesting uh, effect. Shall we blend it? Can well, we, we'll see. Stick it. Yeah, well, that's what I'm wondering, you know, because how much current. Because again, uh, the phenomenon that also happens here is that the. Uh, uh, the generator mm -hmm. draws as much current as it needs. Mm -hmm. It's not regulated at all. Yeah. So it's free flowing. I mean, of course, yeah. if, if the power supply that we're using uh, doesn't have enough current, you know, the, the electronics in the power supply might have a problem with that. Yeah. But batteries don't. Ma batteries will just keep delivering the energy until they're expelled. Yeah. Natural, you know, if we had an unlimited source, then this thing would just keep generating energy yeah. based on whatever. Absorption, you know, that's why when we're in this, the human reaction, when we when we see the meters, you know, when we get closer to it, energy is is increasing. So yeah. we're, it, you know, this, this in the field around. Yeah, well, the, yeah, well, the current starts to go up. Yeah. Now, when we do like, and when we start doing with higher higher end uh, energy, if I take two of these and I have like current meters on the power supplies, and we have these, you know, like four feet apart, mm -hmm. we start bringing them together. The current starts to increase on both of them. Yeah. And when we get it this this far away, you know the current's doubled. Yeah. You know, so it's pulling more and more energy. Mm -hmm. You know, each time because the, the two fields are overlapping and, and actually they're applying a, resi a, 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 a resistance. Yeah. So and but then when that's happening, when we get to a certain point, that's when a, another phenomenon comes forth. Yeah. When two of these fields come the together. The spinning. Yeah. The spinning one. The spinning device in it. Well, it reminds me. Of I'm the, talking the about the etheric effect. It was when the two two toroidal fields that yeah. these are ge being generated are emitted, and then they cross over, start mm -hmm. creating like the vesica yeah. Pisces. Yeah, we get another phenomenon. So yeah. when the living element is in the center of those two, yeah, something very different starts to happen. Yeah, you know, so we get to see some pretty interesting effects. And time mm -hmm. dilation has been known to happen in this. Mm -hmm. You know, in our research, and uh, that's where it, you know. So again, we do small amounts. We're not trying to, you know, to change the world overnight. Yeah. We're just trying to do slow. But this is this is the kind of energy that was running in the site. There's no doubt. Yeah. The element of electromagnetic energy is like all over the. Yeah, and this can be done naturally. Different. Yeah. This can be yeah. done with uh, with the uh, the jars, the vessels. Mm -hmm. You know, with uh, you know. Uh, uh, acidic elements in it, you know, the batteries, like the Baghdad batteries. Like the, 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 like the 30,000 jars and more that they found in the underground tunnels. And absolutely. Stuff. Now, let's, now that you mentioned the 30,000 jars, imagine if those 30,000 jars were all tied together mm -hmm. and what we were able to do with a certain alloy, like the band that I was talking to you about, 
and yeah. it creates a perfect natural resonance with the material and we were able to match the resonant frequency of this material you could see the plasma effect yeah now if it was just right it would start disintegrating the material yeah we would actually see you burning the face off mm. or it wouldn't be burning it would be eliminating the surface material so you can actually shape you can shape yeah. so you want to put a perfect round ball in a piece of red granite you create a <clears throat> spherical shape and you run the plasmatic energy and you just mm. t tap it in it would just it would be almost like melting it so there is no that like in this case i wouldn't need actually a blade i'm just going to be using the force of the energy itself it would be a tool there would yeah. be a tool so this would be like the energy that alters the stone and yeah. then a tool would be coming in to do the job much easier with the frequency or with the beam of energy that's altered on the stone. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. You know, because again, you can see how close we're getting to yeah. uh, almost being able to manipulate that. Well. And you can feel the current just in I, your touch. So imagine if that was Earth instead of you. Yeah. You know, that was either going into a body of water or another yeah. level of material that would bring an absolute yeah, we had, transfer. Yeah. We had the electro the blade and pure gold itself. Absolutely, yeah. Gold that, you know, well, gold is, is, you know, completely, it takes it to a whole different level. Yeah. You know, when I when I take the amulets, you know, that have the gold and we put it in this, you know, if you put it up against a line, mm. the gold will attract to the natural element. It's like a magnet. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I do it with selenite all the time. But yeah. I, when I charge these, I hold them up and, you know, I know when they're charged is when they go, Ding! and they stick to the selenite. Yeah. And that's gold in there. There's no metal. Mm -hmm. You know, well, it's but it's the alabaster. The calcite, the and, the water, and water, and gold. Mm. So again, there's no that magnetic principle. Yes, yes. Yeah, but it's yes. not a magnetic principle until it's activated in this field with a natural mm -hmm. element yeah. or crystals. So like a, a kind of energy like like this, it can be uh, like uh, generated from something like the earth grids? Absolutely. Uh, can it be also transmitted through the alignment with the magnetic fields? Well, the magnetic fields and also water. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talked a little bit about that, uh, about the, the capacitive effect or the resonant effect or transmitting uh, energy through water, yeah. currents of, of electrical current through water it should be done very safely at the same yeah. time. So yeah. if we think about that, let's say, well, the Osirion well, was a device that was, that was uh, almost like a battery, you know, and uh, all of a sudden that causeway, when they generated the energy, they opened up the causeway and they, you know, sent the water to the Nile. Well, mm -hmm. the generator is the Osirion. The Nile is the extension cord, and yeah. all the temples would be connected to this extension cord, getting its energy from yeah. it, which is the we, Nile. We so see in every pyramid construction yeah. that what's known as the Valley Temple is in the yes. lower level that was in the water. Yes. That basically. Yes. And then the rest of the structure is going higher in the Nile. Yes. So perhaps also this was one of the. Well, again, if you, you know, it's almost like if you're taking the water, the water mm -hmm. is is holding the energy. Yeah. And now the natural elements that are connected to the water source, they mm. will be alive. Yeah. They will be transferring this energy. Mm. So we can put a bowl this of water. Actually, you remind me of something. There is a, a very uh, extraordinary or unusual, uh, what they call a seaward system. Mm. Especially it was in the temple of Abu Sir, mm. where all the basins that we know that can be working as also devices like this. Uh, the basins were connected to uh, like underground channels and they were using copper pipes and uh, but of course the official official explanation for it is like uh, it was used to release the the liquids of uh, ceremonies of worshiping and things like that but imagine an underground uh, system under the, the basalt floor there was uh, and there is still actually the channels from stone that used to have copper pipes, and they were connected with the basins. So there was a whole dynamic uh, design of liquids running underneath the stone of the temple. Mm. So. Well, copper is, the, of course, one of the greatest conductors. Yes. You know. also to say that they used to make the, the, the whole basin yeah. with a sheet of copper mm. as well. Mm. So it becomes... Uh, yeah, that would make total sense. Well, let's, since we're on the subject of water, yeah. we have a container of water here, and let's just do a little experiment here. I'll let you do it. I'm going to turn it on. Hopefully I didn't overheat it. Okay, good. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the rod, and I want you to just start at the plastic where the water is empty, okay. or that there's, there's, there's no water, 
and then slowly start going down to the water line. So yeah. you have to touch it? Yeah, and just go down until you get to the water and see what happens. Ooh. Ah, look at all that energy. It's building up. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so now what, what you saw is that yeah. the plastic no interest. Yeah. That water the has water. a high threshold of energy. <laughs> That's stronger. I try to life. tell people what happens. That's stronger than life is strong. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. Like... Water is one of the greatest mysteries yeah. in this type of resident energy. And that's mm -hmm. the reason why we're talking about we can create water capacitors. We can yeah. store the massive amount of energy in this water. Yeah. And we what can the, send it great distance. It's definitely well. one of the elements that's in every pyramid complex. Yeah. You know, the water table. Absolutely. And the yeah. underground uh, sheds. And this, this, it, and the water, you know, yeah. just being ambient, would probably light oh, this yeah. ball brighter this is than the. Uh, than storm, yeah, again, that's up here. Yeah, we get a pretty good amount, but Actually, then yeah, we get the closer. water amplifies the heat. It looks even like, brighter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, let's see. Actually, going, I'm gonna take this. Going the, uh, to the water level was like touching the base. Yeah, I'm gonna take this and let's see what okay. happens. Yeah. As soon as we get to the water, look how much energy there is. Get up here, nothing. <laughs> Get down here. Now, if you took that rod and you open up the lid and you put it down, I promise you, you don't want to do it once. Mm -hmm. Pow! Yeah. <laughs> well, we get an ignition. Mm -hmm. Ignition. You know, we get an ignition source. And what I what I do with this is that I can take a tungsten rod, and it's an eighth inch tungsten. And uh, it's one of the highest temperature melting points. It's like 7,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. I could put it in the water, and within five seconds, the tip will be white, almost melting. Yeah. With minimal current, 200 milliamps of this energy will almost melt the tungsten. Tremendous amount of heat. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious, you know, what would happen? Tungsten is material. like the uh, is the one that's running inside the lamps. It's the same kind of what? What is the material? Tungsten. That's, yeah, it's steel. Like the wire that goes. Well, yeah, the lamp is the, the element. The same, yeah, it's uh, a super. It's a superheated. Now yeah. this is probably going to be really strong. Let me just put this here and see what happens with the line. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's just the water being an amplifier. Yeah. So you know, I put it down here. No, the water. Get energy. No, 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 no. Not so much. The water. Here, the water gives it. And that's that's, the, that's the direct emitter. That's the kind of element. Yeah, this is the emitter. So minimal dielectric. Yeah. But then here, lot. Woo! Hold a lot, man. Yeah. Wow. And we also have to keep in mind the the amp, the resonance that, that's being emitted, the sound. Yeah. The sound is created. Really. So we could dial this up, we can make it a much higher resonance, we can make it a much lower resonance. And these will actually start doing the mm -hmm. same. If we had the right crystals, the crystals would sing in this energy. I have the crystals. It has to be a certain size before a it starts actually singing. Yes. Okay, you can cut now. Let's save it. 